So I just went back and watched my Fantastic Four review, which is the last video I like recorded. The Mission Impossible 3 thing was just in the stratosphere somewhere. I uploaded it out of nowhere just for the sake of it. So I was just sat here trying to do Justice League and I thought to myself, wow, it's really difficult to actually say things. So I went back to that Fantastic Four one to see how I changed. And even though I do think that review is basically shit, what, well, you'd be surprised how hard it is to actually just talk to a camera again after not doing it for two years. I feel basically an app. There's been a slight change of setup in the last two years, but I suppose we should just get on to Justice League now. Well, the, the, the movie you're actually here for, you. Yeah? Justice League is the latest movie in the DC Extended Universe, a universe that since Man of Steel in 2013 has had a troubled history. And whilst I know I'm not the only one who thinks that, I do know that people do enjoy these movies more than I do. I'm, I'm not big up on them. I did like Wonder Woman quite a lot, but for the most part, not a fan. But I still go into these things with hope and optimism. I was really excited to see this even despite the previous track record because Wonder Woman actually was so good. And I'm glad I went because even though what I got was a bit messy to say the least, I actually did have a pretty good time with it. So the big bad in this one is a fella called Steppenwolf. He comes down on some magic carpet ride. He's a bit of a pusher, you know, something of a born to be wild type. So Steppenwolf wants these three mother MacGuffins to take over the planet with and Batman and Wonder Woman have to get together to form the Justice League and stop that. Now there's been a lot of stuff going around about the production of Justice League, uh, to say the least. Obviously Zack Snyder's daughter unfortunately committed suicide, which meant that somewhere during the production, I couldn't say when, he had to step down and Joss Whedon came in, who you'll know from doing Avengers 1 and 2. Now you need only look at anything Joss Whedon's done really, from Firefly, Buffy, Avengers 1 and 2, to know that his style, in theory, doesn't really fit with what the DC Universe has been going for so far. Which is why it's such a surprise that structurally, the movie is rough around the edges but does overall not feel like it's a movie of two completely different mindsets battling it out. Also, apparently, Warner Brothers released some mandate saying that the movie had to be two hours or shorter, which I'm quite cynical of long movies that are over the two-hour mark, which so many blockbusters seem to be, so I was pretty happy about that going in. But coming out, I feel like this, more than any other of Zack Snyder's movies, could have benefited a lot from being longer. And I say that with cautious optimism because I'm sure there will be a director's cut on the DVD Blu-ray release and I will probably watch it but I feel like when Zack Snyder gets too much rain and freedom he goes a little bit too far. But in theory this movie will benefit from that because this movie does a reasonable job, a reasonable one, at introducing each character, giving us stuff to like about them, giving us stuff to invest in but it just can't do it in the runtime. There's only two members of the Justice League that actually have their own movie that's introduced their characters which is Man of Steel and Wonder Woman. Let's not discuss Man of Steel. Batman, of course, got a lot of screen time and development in Batman v Superman, so you could argue he doesn't really need his own solo movie to introduce him. But The Flash, by, uh, played by Ezra Miller, Jason Momoa playing Aquaman, and uh, Ray Fisher playing Cyborg, they all sort of need to be introduced because all they got in the previous movies was a little email, and you need more than that. And I must say, given the restricted runtime, they are brought in reasonably well. Like I, I struggle to see how they could have done much better. I'm not saying they couldn't have done better, but I'm just saying I personally don't know how they would have. It just seems so restricted. Which is a shame because every member of the Justice League here is being well portrayed by each of the respective actors. Ben Affleck as Batman still doing a good job. I don't think there's anything that special about him, but I do think he's still doing a good job. Gal Gadot, while she is an actress that lacks depth in my opinion. She seems, her, her character sort of embodies Wonder Woman so well that it doesn't really matter. Ezra Miller's Flash is surprisingly funny, awkward and likeable all at the same time. Jason Momoa's Aquaman was actually a big surprise to me. In another movie I feel like this type of character would have um, seriously gone to annoy me. But in this one he actually works quite well and there's a little bit more to him and the way they reveal that is quite interesting as far as I'm concerned. The weak point would probably be Ray Fisher as Cyborg. I did like the character of Cyborg. I think there's a lot they can do with him. And I do think Ray Fisher was fine. I think he was good. I think he can definitely improve in the future. I don't feel like they've misplaced the casting there. The whole movie has this kind of choppiness to it, which doesn't work in its favour. Um, going between the scenes, especially in the first act, that just feels quite scatterbrained. There's, there's not much linking them together. It feels very rushed. Once things have sort of been established for the second act, it sort of starts to come into its own a bit, but it's still sort of not quite there. And then we end up on a CGI crazy finale, which admittedly 
is better than what we've gotten in like Wonder Woman and uh, Batman and Superman. There are points early on where it's sort of in danger of losing me because we weren't there wasn't much forward momentum. We were still just establishing, 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 which unfortunately it had to be done. And this is what I mean by the two-hour runtime. You may say that would reduce the momentum, but it would mean that when we do get into the moving forward side of things that it really meant something and it really did move forward drastically. And I think this movie really made the decision to prioritise establishing the heroes over establishing a villain because Steppenwolf is among the worst villains in all of these like superhero movies from both sides. He's just completely CGI, he looks like he's made of CGI, he's big, he's got a big axe hammer thing. It's quite strong. He's got loads of flying bug things around him and they're not that strong. I like putties from Power Rangers, but they, they fly. They have wings. The clone army thing that we keep seeing in these movies does allow for some pretty good fight scenes. And I feel like the fight scenes in this movie are oftentimes notably CGI. The superheroes often look like the, they're Injustice 2 counterparts, but that's fine. It just about holds onto it enough that it feels real enough and, uh, quite frankly, cool enough to sort of keep me gripped. And uh, I'm having a good time whenever things are getting punched. This is part of why I feel like the final battle does sort of hold together, whereas basically every DCEU movie up to now has lost me. Because there is, um, I hate to use the word, they're so cliche, but there's, there is a chemistry between the members of the Justice League that I can't wait to see developed more um, in later movies. And their fighting styles are so different. They contrast each other in a way that you pop to each character and you're seeing sort of a different style. Um, I don't really get that same sense in the Avengers movies. I can't quite put my finger on what exactly I'm talking about here, which is a good start to any point. But whereas I get from the Avengers this feeling of a big celebrity superhero team fighting for everyone, the Justice League feels more like a band of misfits. Like it's hard to describe, it might be the way they're framed, like they'll just be framed straight on, like they're just walking around together and they'll just stand the line and the different colours and the way they look and the way it's not just like an upshot, like a Michael Bay sort of thing. They just seem so normal and odd looking, but it, it does actually work. It's hard to explain, I might be talking out my ass. So we do get some enjoyable action sequences, each action sequence being enjoyable in its own way. We get some pretty good comedy, um, nothing that really made me laugh out loud apart from a movie reference joke, but I probably just laugh to make people know I got the reference, to be honest with you. If I laugh, then people will think I got the reference, and if people think I got the reference, they'll think I watch more movies, and if people think I watch more movies, they'll think I'm inherently a better person than they are. This is the perfect play. But there's some likeable stuff here. We'll get a few chuckles out here. It works fine. As I say, each of the characters work well together. And they're each given their sort of arc. Their thing they've got to get from point A to point B with in terms of them, themselves. And it's not for any of them given enough time to be like a full load off my mind. Well, they finally did it. It's suitable, suitable payoff for each of them. Uh, luckily, there's six suitable payoffs because there's six members. And unfortunately, what this leads to is a general sense of wasted potential, um, but also potential. Like, it makes me look to the future. I'm excited to see what happens next for these people. But there's something sort of wet fartish about the entire thing. It all just sort of, it doesn't come close to being great. It comes close to being good. There's just this purveying sense of, oh, you you didn't quite do it. So I think what this has done, it's gotten the characters out there. People are going to like the characters. If you're a DC fan, I don't know, I'm not a DC fan. They may not be faithful. They probably aren't. But I like them. I'm excited to see more. There's money to be made here, and I'm sure they're happy about that. I'm surprised at how bad of a villain Steppenwolf was. Like, he's really, truly terrible. But they made Aquaman quite good and compelling. They're, they're, they're doing something. There are a few moments near the end that nearly fully redeem it for me and it's hard to give a score for this one because of my completely mixed feelings on the entire thing. But overall I have to look at it and I just have to think, yeah, there's a lot of good here but there's all, there is a lot of bad and I think anyone watching it is going to notice those things and they just got to weigh them up in a way that they decide how much they enjoyed it. So that said, 
I am going to have to give it a 6 out of 10. I did enjoy quite a lot of it. I also didn't enjoy a lot of it. it I enjoy it in a very sort of flaccid way. <laughs> Horrible way to put it. I don't feel like there's enough fun here for me to re-watch it again and not be bored by the setting up stuff. I feel like that only is going to work once. I will look forward to the director's cut. I'm getting it on Blu-ray. I'll watch it. Maybe talk about it. But well, I'm not one of those comic book guys who can really throw together a thing like that. But who knows, maybe. That was Justice League. This is me. And if you're lucky, you'll never see me again. In silent cinema, no one can hear you scream.